Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to the vlog. Today you join me, I'm back at base. And I want to make a slightly different video to normal. So generally I'm out and about. I'm either at the coast or I'm in a woodland and I'm out with my camera taking some photos. But I wanted to add something different to the channel. So every so often what I'm thinking now is I'll intersperse an episode where I record it here at base and I give you an idea on something that has either influenced my photography or could also benefit yours. That could be something got to do with how I photograph an image when I managed to get it back to base to have a look at what could I have done differently or how I edited the image was there any tips and tricks and such like that that I had to use or again did I make any mistakes that I had to fix in post or that I wasn't able to fix in post and also as well what I'd like to try and do is to try and give you some further information to add more value into the channel in regards to areas that I think within photography that I found improvement on that could also benefit you so that's what we're going to do for today I hope you enjoyed this one and we're going to look at one image and in one image in particular where I figured I could have done things differently even when I was shooting it but also with editing so yeah that's what we're going to do today let's go okay so I'm going to jump over into my computer here now and I'll give you a look at one image like I would have said so starting out here have you has as you can see here I have one of the images and it was a great morning actually that I had there out in the wild garlic um, and this was actually the spot that I'd wanted to get to day one when I first arrived to get some photographs I really really liked how the pathway would have gone up here and then you've got it lined with garlic the whole way through and then this tree that was breaking the whole thing worked quite well for me I think it worked as a very very good interrupter and overall I really found the scene pleasing now when I arrived to take this photograph, I was hoping to get some nice light, but there was no light at this point in time. And it actually was more fortuitous because it ended up meaning that I had a more balanced image and I didn't have to worry about highlights. Now, what I wanted to show you here is the importance of white balance and white balance adjustment. So here's the image here straight in. There's been nothing uh, done whatsoever to it. And when I start to look at these areas here and I start to say, okay, I want to, let's say, have a look at the areas here where the flowers and such like that are. They're white, they're perfectly fine. But something I generally do, and it's probably because I'm using filters, is I always make sure that I'm adjusting my white balance as one of the first things that I do because it can really change the image and how the image ends up being processed. So when I start to look here, what I do is I take this little uh, eyedropper and if we bring that then to a white product or a white area of a white pixel rather, you see this, watch, the image will change. And what ends up happening here is if we just toggle back and forth between that, you will see that, you know, it not only is making it more white in relation to what the actual flower tops were, but it's also kind of subduing the color that's in the uh, image. So that's the original, like I said here, a lot more vibrant on color. But if you click on the white balance here, the white stays the same, but what it does is it brings all of this color really, really down. And it was something actually that struck me on one of the comments that I had on my um, episode of the video it was actually Gavin Hardcastle. Thanks, Gavin, for, you know, pointing it out because I think you were right in relation to it, is that when I was shooting on my video, it was a lot more vibrant. It was actually more or less similar to what you see here. But when I edited the images then, I used the, um, the dropper and I managed to change that. And what it did was it actually reduced the vibrancy on the colors. So give you a look again once more. There's the original. And there is this, a big, big difference within the image. And it's something that, you know, I generally would do, but for this situation as well, it's always good to go back over your original. And generally a raw file shouldn't be more vibrant than a process file. But by doing this here, it brings down the uh, overall um, vibrancy within the image. Now, what I'll show you here, I suppose, and what we'll do is we'll do a very quick uh, edit, you know, maybe similar to what I would have before, but we'll just do it on the fly, okay? So the image here, when I look at the histogram, it says that it's underexposed, that the, the, the blacks are here. So if I want to look at this, I can click on this here and it'll show me the areas that actually are dark, which is just this bit here. Not much really for me to worry about. So overall, I think the image was exposed well. Now, if I can do, I can bring up my shadows ever so slightly here. And now that effectively is removing the area that's gone dark and the image then is effectively, I could be more or less done at this point. Now, what I want to do here for the sake of this is keep with the white balance at the uh, eyedropper that I've done here. But okay, we'll just change this. And we'll say, okay, let me, let me explore. Can I get a bit more out of the whites? So if I bring my whites slightly up here, you'll see the histogram is moving. And then moreover, if I click again on this here, it will show me 
exactly what areas are being overexposed. Very handy tool to have to be able to have a quick reference because when you look at the histogram, yes, you might see that it's peaking, but it may be peaking in something that's not even relevant within the image. And then it can help you to get the exposure across all of the image. So let's look at this here again. If I bring this down back down, so the area that's getting white, which is originally what I had thought it was going to be, is the white of the flowers. So just be careful in relation to that because, you know, when I look at this here now, if I turn that off, it doesn't look like it's overexposed. But if we start to look in and we zoom into these areas here, you will see that they are in fact losing some detail. So again, if I just bring the whites slightly back down again, you get more detail coming back into those flowers as opposed to them like this. And I'll take off that highlighted art so you can see. It just becomes too white, whereas here you start to gain some of the detail back within the flower. So zooming back out again now for this, uh, and what I'm going to do here is just go through general process that I would do. There's not much really for me to do for this image, I don't think overall, uh, but one of the first things I'll do is look and say, okay, am I happy with my composition? And moreover, when this here, I see, the first thing I see is I want to be able to have the star of the show being the main thing within the image. And ultimately the areas that are not adding any value, can I remove those by potentially changing a crop? A preferred crop for me is a 16 by nine when I'm in landscape or a five by 10 when I'm in portrait. So we'll go in here and we'll just change this and we'll go into a 16 nine and see what that looks like. Now, what I can do is I can move this up or I can move this down. Now the reality of the situation is if I bring this down here, I'm losing the foliage at the top and I'm introducing something which for me doesn't add value to the image. So I'll bring it up and I'll bring it to around about maybe here. And then if I just close in on that here, and then I take a moment and I step back and I have a look and say, okay, how has that worked out? Is it something that actually has benefited me on the image? For me, I think it does. So we'll stick in relation to um, that as, a, as a, a crop for the composition anyway. Now, the next thing that I want to do then is I want to say, okay, what detail do I want to change or what details do I need to add or increase in within the image? Now, there is no, um, I keep losing focus. Uh, there is no um, fog or mist or anything like that for me to contend with here in relation to that. So I don't think I'm going to worry in relation to dehaze. But what you can do with dehaze is go the opposite direction to where you normally would, particularly when you're in a woodland. So if I normally go here to the right hand side to use dehaze, you can see if I go the extreme, the blacks are coming blacker. I'll turn that off so you can see. The blacks are coming blacker and it's really kind of crunching up all the entire detail. But if I go the other direction, what it adds in is a bit of a mystery, a bit of a fake fog and such like that within the image. It gives it more of a dreamy effect as well. Now, I didn't use it for here and I don't think I'm going to use it much. Probably give it maybe a minus eight and stick with that. There's not much more that I need to kind of add into that. But what I do want to be conscious of is, okay, this area up here on the right hand side, that's where the sunlight was. It's not overexposed, but is it a bit bright? So I'll play around and say, okay, on my highlights, if I reduce that down, you'll see that's the area here that's changing. So I can bring that down. That now gives you a bit more detail within the, the foliage, bringing it back to where it was. Like I said, it's not overly exposed. You can see that there's nothing blown out, but it is a very bright area within the image. So I'm going to reduce that down, probably maybe minus 40. Uh, shadows, I don't think I need to bring them up that much, you know, as we've done already, but you can see on the, the bark of the tree here, if it's an interesting point, so if my shadow's all the way down, that goes dark, you can see that it brings in and there's more detail as well within that, that you know, your sensor is going to be able to capture. But uh, for me, I'm not going to bring it all the way up. Uh, whites, I don't need to change that much. I've already done that. And blacks, if I bring those down, these are all obviously your darker areas. You can bring that up slightly, make it more of a balance in the histogram because it is a bit underexposed as far as the histogram is concerned there. And that's pretty much it, except for one thing, which I think is vibrance. So like I said from the outset, it's not, it's not shouldn't be a case that the raw file should be more vibrant than your edited file. And because what I did with the white balance here, it makes a big, big difference. Now, when you do white balance at the very beginning, it sets your baseline. And I'll give you a look now here that if I introduce vibrance into that, I'm bringing it back more or less to where it would have been in the first instance, which is a plus 30 on the vibrance. Now, if I then go back to my white balance and let's just say, okay, we go back to as shot. Now you see, there's a huge amount more color after coming back into the image because number one, it's been done from how it was shot. And then number two, if I bring the vibrance back down again to, uh, let's say plus three, you still have 
more color as well just by letting the white balance alone now also what i'd like to do here go into the white balance and just go auto and see what does it do and what that does is it's taking it again from a white within the image but it's reducing the vibrancy within the image overall so i think what i'm going to do on this one is leave it as shot and you can see there's a lovely pleasing uh, palette there within that and ultimately that's the one thing i would like to say is you know just be very careful when you're using your white balance because you know ordinarily it's there to be able to affect but if it's reducing your vibrancy within the image then maybe not do that so thank you very much for joining this quick episode hope you've learned from something that i've learned anyway during this hope you've enjoyed the way i've shown taking that image and if it's your first time on the channel please hit the subscribe button give me a like give me a comment and until the next time schlange fallen